Assalamualaikum and welcome to our video about animal rights and welfare in Islam and Eid al-Adha. As I was growing up, I used to love the idea of Eid, but one of the things that I often struggled with was the sacrificing of animals. The idea of those poor innocent animals being slaughtered never sat well with me. Until I began reading about animal rights in Islam and I came to realize that Islam actually prescribed a lot of kindness and mercy towards animals. Once I began reading, I came to realize that the cycle of life and the food chain work by having a group of organisms depending on a series of another as the food source. As humans, we need meat. It provides us with vitamins and minerals such as vitamin B12, calcium, zinc and iron. However, along with this comes a responsibility to ensure that the meat we're getting is coming from ethical and humane sources. Farms across the world are keeping their animals in inhumane conditions. Animals are being kept in crowded spaces where they're literally shitting on top of each other. They're being overfed so that they're falling sick. And they're being stuffed full of antibiotics they just don't need. And all of this is done just to get a few extra pennies in. What's worse is these antibiotics are then being pumped into our bodies. Some researchers have said that this is fueling antibiotic resistant bacteria in humans, which is leading to new superbugs. What would our Prophet ﷺ say if he were to see the state of farms in today's day and age? As Muslims, we should be ensuring that animals are being treated with mercy and kindness. And a good example of this is an incident that took place with our Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ once entered a garden and saw a camel which came crying to him. He, he approached the camel and rubbed off its tears and asked, who is the owner of this camel? The owner replied, it is mine. The Prophet ﷺ said, do you not fear Allah in regards to the animals that he has made you owner of? Indeed, your animal complained to me that you starve and overwork it. This shows us that we should be ensuring that animals are kept in ethical and humane conditions. The halal way of slaughtering. Most Muslims are aware that we cannot eat meat that has not been slaughtered by saying Bismillah first. But did you know that it's actually prohibited to slaughter one animal in front of another? The Fuqaha unanimously agreed that this is one of the etiquettes of animal slaughtering. So next deed, why don't we educate Muslim brothers and sisters around us not to slaughter one animal in front of another? Another important thing about animal slaughtering is that you should be ensuring the instrument that is used to slaughter the animal is sharp so as to cause minimum pain to that animal. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you kill, kill well. And if you slaughter, slaughter well. Let each one of you sharpen his blade and spare the suffering of the animal he slaughters. Finally, it's said that you shouldn't drag an animal to slaughter or treat it violently. Eating less and eating only when hungry. The Prophet Wasallam used to be a huge advocate of eating only when you were hungry and to stop eating with a little bit of hunger left. This was one of the core principles that kept doctors away when Islam was being spread across Medina and its surrounding areas. Inshallah, we will cover this topic in another video. You might be wondering how this topic relates to today's video. What is the basic principle of supply and demand? If we're eating less, there's less demand to provide meat quickly in huge amounts by the farmers. This means farmers are able to keep their animals in better conditions and it also means that we get better quality meat. Being kind and merciful to animals. Every day we hear about how animals are being abused in the news. Whether it be the bullfighting in Spain or the illegal lion hunting in Africa, Islam has always emphasized being caring towards animals from the beginning. Islam outlaws tying up animals for target practice or for simple fun, which causes them harm. The Prophet ﷺ said a woman was once sent to help because of a cat which she detained. She did not feed it when she detained it and she did not let it free to eat from the woman of the earth. On the other hand, people have been forgiven their sins for being kind to animals. A famous instance being of the prostitute who saw a dog dying of thirst and gave it water in her shoe. She was forgiven her sins. And finally, I'd like to touch on Eid al-Adha. The purpose behind Eid al-Adha isn't just having fun, sacrificing animals and meeting and greeting each other. It's actually about the huge sacrifice that Prophet Ibrahim nearly made of his son for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Muslims, would we be able to say today that we're that connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We can't even be bothered to see whether animals are being mistreated or not when they're being sacrificed. Yes, animal sacrificing is a huge part of Eid al-Adha, but along with it comes a responsibility to ensure that the animals are being treated ethically and humanely. We also need to be ensuring that this meat is actually going to the poor and needy who don't get this luxury. So next Eid, why don't we try and ensure 
that the animals are being treated with kindly and with mercy and that we are actually giving that meat to those that really need it. Thank you for watching this video. As you can see, I'm not very comfortable in front of the camera. However, I got up early in the morning and decided to make this video despite it being quite windy and noisy today. And that's because I feel passionately about animal rights and welfare. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to share it with your friends and other Muslims who are animal lovers.